the past, I have avoided colored inks because they were pretty much only available as technical pens. And uh, I've moved away from technical pens in favor of um, brush pens and footing nibs. And you can see these are all my colored technical pens right here. Um, recently though, Soccer of America, uh, like these right here, the Pigma brush, uh, Copic, and Prismacolor have started releasing brush tipped uh, fine liners, or um, I think Prismacolor calls these art markers, which is a little bit confusing because they actually have art markers on the market. Uh, but they've started releasing brush tipped pins that are Copic marker proof and waterproof. And I've started kind of collecting them because I think that's really neat and I'd like to be able to do colored line art. And I thought I would do um, a series of inks where I use just one of each color to ink the entire piece and then go over it the way I normally would with markers and see um, how the ink is affected basically by the markers on top of it. Um, and that would give me more information on what to use when deciding which colored inks to use if I wanted to do colored line arts. And I hope this will prove useful for you, you guys. I hope it'll give you some necessary information. I'm going to go ahead and show you the nibs. And a couple of them were a little bit dry when I first got them, but storing them, not instead of horizontally storing them uh, brush side down kind of promoted the ink to flow to the tip. And I think that helped a lot. Now you may have difficulty finding the Copic Multiliner SPs with these nice brush tips. I think they're being removed from the market. Uh, they probably just didn't sell as well. But if you have them, you can still get the ink refills if not the nib refills. So um, they're all about the same size. And other than the Copic being metal and a little bit heftier, the they all weigh pretty much the same too. And the brushes are pretty similar in size with the Copic being a little bit larger than the Prismacolor and the Prismacolor being a little bit larger than the Pigma. And I've already had an opportunity to kind of play around with all of them. And they all handle um, fairly similarly. The Prismacolor is a little stiff and a little prone to becoming mushy, but otherwise it's not really a problem. And since so many of you expressed an interest um, on my last inking tutorial video, I thought you guys would enjoy this as well. Now these are, they feel like fiber nibs, not nylon nibs. I think though the, um, the Copic is a nylon rubber or a nylon foam rib. Oh, goodness, nylon foam nib. And I know that most people who do colored line arts color the various parts with use different colors for the various parts. Um, and I'd like to eventually get to that point as my collection grows and as I understand how my markers influence the color of my inks. But for now, I just sort of wanted to focus on one color and see how that goes. So I'm starting with one of the pinks. It might be the only pink. They don't really give color names. Um, from the Pigma line. And I got most of these at my local Jerry's Artorama. And if you haven't been to Jerry's yet, I highly recommend you go. It's always a lot of fun. It's kind of a bit of an, an art supply adventure. You never really know what you're gonna find. In my experience, the staff has been pretty helpful. And like always, I'm going to allow the ink to dry for 24, at least 24 hours before I go ahead and um, apply any sort of color on top of it. That way the ink is fully cured. And today I'm inking in a Strathmore Visual Journal. This one is the smooth finish. It's very easy to ink on because there's nothing to sort of catch on your brush nib. 
so your brush just sort of glides across the paper. And um, when using lighter colored inks, there is a strong possibility that your graphite will never erase from underneath the ink. Um, I'm aware of that. I'm testing for properties, so I'm okay with that. If that's something that bothers you, you can use a light box. And if you're looking for specific brush pin reviews or recommendations, um, in the summer of 2015, I reviewed several brands in depth, and you can read those reviews at natosoup.blogspot.com under the review section. There's a whole section on food aid pins. Hopefully that will help you find the pin that's just right for you. And if you enjoy content like this, if you find it beneficial, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel for even more videos like this. And if you'd like to help fund more content like this, please consider uh, backing my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. All right, so the first face is finished and in inked and it needs to dry for 24 hours before I can start markering it or before I even erase it. And I ink this with the Sakura Pigma brush in this pink color here. Now we're gonna take a look at the Copic Multiliner SP in sky blue. And um, I received this in my sketch box, the limited edition box. Um, and so these might be a little harder to find. I already did one test with it and I really liked how it turned out, which is kind of why I wanted to experiment with these other options. I know this one's been out for a little while, so I don't know what took me so long to get on the bandwagon other than I'm a little heavy-handed and if you're heavy-handed a brush like this even if it's a fairly well-made brush like that can sometimes be too big and it can be difficult for you to get the lines you want but testing all of those different food aid pins for the blog has really improved my control Now, for those of you watching this, hoping to learn a little something about inking, when I'm pulling my line back to where it meets her bangs, I'm putting additional pressure on it so the line weight will be heavier because that would be an area of shadow. And the more you practice this, the better you're going to get. So don't worry if you're kind of having some trouble getting the hang of it. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly natural. Anything worth having is worth practicing for. You may also find it frustrating inking with the spine of your book getting in the way of your hand. If that's the case for you, um, just remove it from your book. I know that sounds like a duh, but you wouldn't believe how many people try to fight their materials when we're the ones who might have better flexibility. You can always tape it back in the book later. Also, these kind of brush pins really work best on smooth paper surfaces. You're gonna get the best result and it's gonna be easiest to pull longer lines. If you want a dry brush, effect, I recommend using a brush that has multiple bristles, like the Pentel Pocket Brush. You also want to be careful not to rest your hand in an area where the ink is still wet, because your hand will pick up the ink and it'll end up leaving a stamp print of ink somewhere you don't want it. And if you're going to render with markers or watercolor over this, you can't make corrections until the end. There's our second ink test using the Copic Multiliner SP in sky blue. All right, so we're gonna look at one last pin today, and that is the Prismacolor Art Marker with the brush tip. 
And I thought, because it was in the brush section, I thought I grabbed one in this really nice turquoise color. But no, no, no. It's a technical pen. So, still have yet to attain the blue. But we'll, we'll go ahead and ink this one in red. And for those of you who are bored with me using Kara as the subject for my field test, you'll be happy to know that there is a new option on my Patreon that allows backers at a certain level to dictate what the upcoming field tests will be. So if you want to see me draw something specific, that is the tier for you. And not only do you get to watch me draw something you would enjoy more than my original characters, you can, you'll can you also uh, rest comfortable, rest easy, I don't know. You can take satisfaction in the fact that you're helping to support this channel. So of the three pins I've shown you guys, the Prismacolor one is the most mushy. It's a little bit harder to control. And you need to be careful because you're going to get that stamping. When I was looking over the magenta um, Sakura Pigma, Pigma piece I just did, uh, I saw some areas of stamping. And hopefully they won't even be noticeable once I apply the color because it is sort of a hot pink. And I will be applying a skin tone over it. So it may just look intentional. But if I was using a black ink, it would definitely be no definitely be noticeable. And it seems like this one takes a little bit longer to dry, making it more prone to that stamping. And if you think when you do eyelashes, when you draw eyelashes, they come out too heavy, you can do what I do and leave them sort of open. I'm sorry, my camera doesn't want to focus on it. See, I already got the stamping over here. And you should be able to clean that off of your hand with water or rubbing alcohol. And it's important you do clean it off your hand because it will keep stamping as it did on her hair and on her face. So that's one of the downsides of these is they're a little bit slower to dry than some of the other pens we covered today. So I'll see you guys in a couple days when the ink is cured and I'm ready to apply my alcohol markers on top of these three samples. And I know I have other colors to test, um, but I figured I would try one of each types of brush uh, tipped technical pen and uh, see maybe if there's a preference. So I'll see you guys in a couple days. Bye.